Next, we're going to talk about the process of ossification. Ossification means to make bone. In order to make bone or build bone, you need a special type of cell called an osteoblast. Now, there are other types of cells that are involved with the building of bone, and we've seen these before from the previous chapter. One is the osteocyte, which you now or hopefully will remember that an osteocyte is a mature bone cell that maintains bone. You have an osteoblast, right, which builds bone, and then an osteoclast, which destroys bone. So there's two types of ossification. There are two types of ways of making bone. The first one is called intramembranous ossification. What does intra mean? Inside, in between, right? Membranous refers to what structures within the human body? Membranes. Membranes. And ossification means to make bone. So intramembranous ossification means the making of bone between connected tissue membranes. The making of bone between connective tissue membranes. Endochondral ossification is the second mechanism for making bones. So endo means inside. Chondral refers to what tissue? Cartilage. Right? So endochondral ossification. It's the process of making bone within cartilage. Okay? The process of making bone within cartilage. Right? It's endochondral ossification. All right, so taking a closer look at intramembranous ossification, right? Forget about all of this information here. That's not the important part. The important part, or what you have to understand, is that intramembranous ossification is the process of making bone between connective tissue membranes. And the result of making bone within connective tissue membranes is this classification of bone right here called a flat bone. So intramembranous ossification is responsible for making flat bone bones. Okay, it's responsible for making flat bones. And the way that the process works is this. You have connective tissue membranes, right, on each side of this area right here. And what happens is within this middle, within the middle part of this, these connective tissue membranes, cells spontaneously become osteoblasts. And they make bone. And then they make more bone. And then they make more bone until eventually you have what we call as a flat bone. So the second type of bone making or formation of bone is called endochondral ossification. So before we talk about the process of endochondral ossification, let's talk about a couple of things that are involved with endochondral ossification. And the first one is this thing called the primary ossification center. Primary means first. Ossification means the process of making bone. Center is just the location. So the primary ossification center is located in the diaphysis of a long bone. The secondary ossification center, right, or the second area where bone is formed, will be located in the epiphyses of long bones. And again, the cells that are involved with the making of bones, you have these things called chondrocytes, which are cartilage-making cells or mature cartilage cells that maintain cartilage. And then we talked about osteoblasts and osteoclasts previously. So when we take a look at endochondral ossification, remember, it's the formation of bone within cartilage. So cartilage serves as a framework. It serves as a model for bone to be laid upon. And what you have is cartilage being slowly replaced by bone. So the first thing that you need is you need a cartilage model. So this cartilage model again will provide a framework. At the center of this cartilage model, Cells will spontaneously change into osteoblasts. So within the diaphysis, osteoblasts begin laying down bone. The center is called the primary ossification center, right? So in the middle of the diaphysis, osteoblasts begin replacing cartilage with bone. Now, after birth, right, is where you will see the secondary ossification centers appear. Secondary ossification centers are located within the epiphyses. And throughout growth, your bones will continue to lengthen as long as you have cartilage between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. Eventually what happens is there's no more cartilage between the epiphysis and diaphysis, and that's when bone growth will stop. So next we're going to talk about how bone continues to lengthen through your adolescence, right? So the time from when you were born to the time you are an adult, this is the process of how bone will grow 
in length, right? I'm only going to talk about length. It also grows in width, but I'm only going to talk about length. So here, we are going to draw a bone. Right? So this end over here is the epiphysis. This shaft is the diaphysis. And in between, you have this structure right here called the epiphyseal plate or growth plate. The epiphyseal plate is made up of chondrocytes or cartilage making cells, right? And these cartilage making cells are active at making cartilage in this direction. Right. Bone cells are making bone in this direction. So in order for bone to lengthen, cartilage cells or cartilage making cells must remain active. So all these chondrocytes have to be actively making cartilage in this direction. And on this end, bone cells are replacing cartilage to make bone. In essence, the bone is now lengthening. Okay? At some point in time, into your adulthood, the bone lengthening process will stop. And what you're left with is a line. In other words, there's no more cartilage between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. And all you're left with is this line where cartilage used to be. This is now called the epiphyseal line, right? The epiphyseal line. Bone remodeling is just the reshaping of bone. In order to reshape bone, you need special cells called osteoclasts, which we've talked about before and we'll talk about in the repair of a fracture.